This is an underground aquarium zoo run entirely by volunteers. They have 40 of the most beautiful freshwater and saltwater setups stocked with some very nice fish, corals and plants. In this video we are exploring the wonderful underwater world of Aquazoo Leerdam. It is located in the basement of a nursing home and upon entering you are greeted by some massive fish. This tank holds a whopping 5650 liters of crystal clear salt water and is home to some amazing salt water monster fish. As you can see this tank is stocked with a variety of sharks, puffer fish, an eel and so much more. These powerful predators are a sight to behold as they glide gracefully through the water. Next up is this massive red sea biotope salt water tank, featuring a range of soft corals, wrasses, surgeon fish and a group of antheas. This aquarium holds over 2700 liters of water and is home to a diverse array of marine life. Take a moment to observe the massive colonies of anemones. These fascinating creatures are known for their symbiotic relationships with other marine life, including the iconic clownfish. Welcome to the world of the poison dart frogs. These fascinating amphibians are the main inhabitants of this biotope and can often be found living in or near bromeliads. Because these plants hold water, the frogs are able to keep their skin and eyes moist and the females often lay their eggs in the bromeliads as well. But there's more to these frogs than just their ability to thrive in this damp environment. In nature, poison dart frogs are deadly poisonous, capable of using toxins from the beetles and ants they eat to create their own poison. However, in this biotope, the frogs primarily feed on fruit flies and have lost much of their toxicity over time. Despite this, it's important to remember that these frogs are still quite delicate and their skin is thin and prone to infection. So it's best to admire them from a safe distance and avoid touching them whenever possible. In addition to the frogs, this biotope is home to a variety of other plants and organisms, including mosses, air plants and much more. It truly is a unique and fascinating ecosystem. This aquarium features a mangrove styled scape. It's home to some archer fish, dragon gobies and a few other species. These funny looking creatures are called four-eyed fish. They are a type of fish that are known for their unique physical appearance of having four eyes. These fish are native to Central and South America and they are typically found in slow moving bodies of water. One of the most interesting things about four-eyed fish is that they have two eyes on the top of their head and two on the bottom. This allows them to see both from above and below the water at the same time, which is a useful adaption in their habitat. You may have noticed that there is a stain of water on the glass. Well, let me tell you, they didn't forget it during maintenance. In fact, this aquarium has tight technology built in, meaning it will drop 25 centimeters of water and fill up again, just how tides work in the ocean. Next to this crazy setup is a whole wall of nano aquascapes. They call it the library wall. Can you guess why they call it this? Take a guess in the comments down below. These aquascapes feature a range of aquatic plants and freshwater fish. Their goal is to show you that with little space you can still create an awesome aquarium at home. This right here is a brackish aquarium, meaning it's a mix of freshwater and saltwater. This aquarium is home to some very interesting fish, some mudskippers, pufferfish, mono angel fish and a few invertebrates. Mudskippers are some of the most interesting animals I've ever seen in an aquarium. They are unique in that they are able to move on land using their pectoral fins, allowing them to look for food and escape predators in both aquatic and terrestrial environments. They are also able to breathe through their skin and the lining of their mouths, allowing them to survive out of the water for extended periods of time. This small tank is called the shark daycare, because this thing on the glass is a shark egg and the small fish behind it are baby sharks. For a period of 3 months the baby shark develops inside the egg. Then it hatches and eventually they will rehome it to, for example, large aquariums and zoos. To some people this aquarium may look a bit boring upon first glance, but when you take a look at the tablets that they have besides all aquariums, you will find out that there is over 40,000 liters worth of flow blasting through this aquarium. It's called a hillstream tank. The inhabitants are used to these environments. 
the flow blasts from the left side of the tank to the right side and flows back to the left side from underneath the aquarium. How cool is that? The volunteers here do maintenance on the tanks every Thursday night. I visited on Wednesday, so you may see some algae on the glass in some tanks, like this one for example. In my opinion that makes it even better, since the glass is covered up, the fish can't really see you and thus will display their natural behavior. This is the kids most favorite aquarium when they visit, it houses seahorses. This aquarium was completely renovated at the beginning of 2020 and it contains more than 450 liters of salt water. The 450 liters of salt water doesn't include 60 liters which is in the filtration system. That will bring the total to 510 liters of salt water. This aquarium is different from all other saltwater aquariums because unlike the others, here the rock wall is made of plastic. All rocks that can be seen along the sides and back are made of polyester. To protect it against the salt it is completely covered with epoxy. This is a type of resin that prevents the salt water from coming into contact with the plastic, which could lead to problems. This aquarium is built like a cave because that's where these fish live in nature. These fish are called blind cave fish and are a good example of how animals can adapt to the environment in which they live. If you look closely you will see that these fish have no eyes. This is because where they originate from, namely the caves of Mexico in Central America, among others, they do not need it. It is completely dark in these caves. Due to the disappearance of the eyes, other organs have started to develop to a higher level. One of these organs allows the fish to sense water pressure. The closer they get to an object, the more water pressure there is and that's how they avoid bumping into things. This is one of the most stunning freshwater aquascapes I've ever seen. It holds over 3600 liters of water and is heavily planted. It is home to various groups of fish. There is a large group of Congo tetras in the aquarium. A beautiful freshwater fish. They have very elegant fins and beautiful colors, especially the males. These fish immediately caught my eye when I first saw this aquarium. They look a lot like catfish and after checking the tablet, this information was correct. These tablets are a great addition to the zoo, as you can read all information about the aquarium setup and all equipment they use. Fun fact, because of all the equipment in this aquarium, extra heating is not necessary. The equipment gives off heat and in this way the aquarium water is heated to about 26 degrees Celsius without the use of an aquarium heater. This cute fish is a Mabu pufferfish. This one grows to be the largest of all freshwater pufferfish. They can reach a length of up to 70 centimeters. Therefore, these fish need a very large aquarium. Nowadays, we see these beautiful animals more and more in pet shops, but this is not a fish that can be purchased without any consideration, which, in my opinion, applies to every fish. In addition to the length they can get, they are also real predatory fish. When they get larger, the demand for food gets bigger, and when you can meet this demand, they will go hunt for themselves. Everything that fits in his mouth, he will gobble up. Everything that doesn't fit will be made to size with the razor sharp teeth that can even crack bones. Aquazulirdom is definitely worth paying a visit if you're into aquariums and fish, or if you want to convince your relatives to get into the hobby. There's so much inspiration you can pull from all these beautiful setups. Leerdam is located in the central part of the Netherlands, so take a look at their website and see if you can make the trip. I've shown just a few highlights of the zoo in this video, there's so much more to explore.